We're here today at Radiator Supply House, home of the Icebox in Sweet Home, Oregon. And uh, we get a frequently asked question, and we want to kind of explain this out to you so you can see how to do this properly. That is, how do you properly measure a radiator? This can be very confusing. So when you look at the radiator, there's the core, and then there is the overall. Two different measurements. If a person is asking for a core measurement, you're always gonna go in between the headers. That is your first measurement, 20 and three quarters. And that doesn't matter if it's a cross flow radiator. If that's a cross flow radiator, you start, oh boy, we're having fun today. You start with the cross flow side of it. This here is a down flow, so we're gonna go back to how it is. First measurement, 20 and three quarters. Second measurement is just the fins we want to measure. We're going to call that 19 and a half. Do not measure the side rails. That would be an overall measurement. Do not measure overall. That's an overall measurement. Now, if you're looking at a description online and they're saying overall, of course, you're going to measure overall. But typically, radiators have been measured in core dimensions. The other thing then, once you got that figured out, you want to figure out the thickness of the core. Not all radiators are created equal. You can build a four row core a hundred different ways. The tube spacing, the fin spacing, the size of tubes. You can go a three eighths tube, a half inch tube, a five eighths tube, a nine sixteenths tube. There's all different tube sizes. Um, and then you have different types of fins, flat fins, serpentine fins, you have louvered fins. Um, in the old early cat cores, you had what was called a canted core. Some people called them herringbones. Um, so if you come in here, you're going to start. I like to use a zip tie. It's safe. Don't use wire. Don't use a ice pick. You'll damage that. You come through here on the back side, you'll see that come out. Touch that. Pull this back out. I'm going to lay this down we're going to call that that's a three inch core so that is how you properly measure the thickness of a core because again when you start looking at radiators i can actually cut cost and sell you a cheaper radiator by just making this say a two and a half inch core now it's not created equal to maybe what came out of that vehicle from the factory so be careful for that the other thing that uh that we'll look at oftentimes with these um, is again go back and look at the fin spacing so i'm going to look at the fin spacing because that also can break down how this core will perform so i'm going to start and i'm going to line that up on a fin and i'm going to take an inch and i'm going to count this is nine fins per inch so this would be a nine fin per inch it looks to me like a non louvered flat fin. So what is the value of fins per inch? Um, so you look at something that would have high fins per inch is something you would use on the highway, asphalt, maybe a semi truck, something you would see in your Honda car, your Chevy pickup. If you're going out into the field where you have debris, agriculture, um, maybe in the logging industry, dairy, farming, that type of stuff, you're gonna wanna open those fins up because if fins are plugged up, it doesn't matter how many fins you have or don't have, if it's plugged, you're not gonna get dissipation of heat. So it's very important to look at your fins per inch and make sure that it's adequate for the actual application of where this radiator is gonna be in. So that is how you do fins per inch. So right there, we have just showed you how to properly measure a core. If you have any other questions about measuring a core, anything about radiators, charger coolers, oil coolers, any of that, how many fins per inch should I be using? What kind of a radiator, aluminum, copper brass, why should I use one over the other? Put that in the comments below. Reach out to us, reach out to your local dealer. Hey Will, where do I get an ice box? Where do you get an ice box? Well, that's easy. Call your local dealer. Whoever it is, if you have an equipment dealer, a truck dealer, your local radiator shop, your local parts house, if you've got an equipment salvage yard close, most likely every one of those people are a dealer for our product. That's where you get an ice box.